Howdy folks and welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory and today is Wednesday, April the 26th, 2017. And I have the great honor and very distinct pleasure of welcoming back to the show uh, Brad Harris from Full Spectrum Survival. And Brad, I understand you've got a new project going on. Why don't you tell us what you what you have going on? Sure, absolutely. So as we each watch the world kind of deteriorate, my wife and I have wanted an outlet to give off-grid information. Uh, you know, we have gone through so many uh, methods in our drive to being completely off the grid, to being literally the gray man every day and the gray woman, that we want to get have an outlet for that information. So we started a new YouTube channel, Off Grid with Brad and Kelly, where we discuss those very things. Uh, our adventure, if you will, completely off the grid, no power hookup, uh, running everything on microcomputers that can be run off your solar systems. So if anyone's interested in, in getting off the grid and maybe even learning from our, mis- our mistakes, come over to Off Grid with Brad and Kelly on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. We'd love to see you there. Sounds great. That sounds like a really cool project. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're introducing that because I'm not even fam- not, not familiar with it. And I plug into your channel regularly. Let's move to the subject at hand, which is Fukushima. And Fukushima ties into off-grid because if, if this thing, which they're not going to be able to get under control, it doesn't appear, Brad, in, in possibly even in during our lifetime, and it just continues to morph, it continues to obliterate our entire world, and the world governments, the world authorities, are standing idly by, their hands are tied, the technology is not in place, and it's an ever-increasing, the danger levels are ever-increasing. I mean, how or what do you see that we should do or not do, or what are your thoughts on what's happening with Fukushima and with our world? Sure. You you know, you brought up a great point, and that's that Fukushima literally is an extinction level event. It is. It can't be described as anything else. Now, that doesn't mean that it's like a meteor coming out of space that's going to hit Earth. And in a 24 hour period, you're going to decimate life on this planet. This is a slow kill. Now, we have watched some white papers from major universities around the world who have broached the subject of really discussing how people will handle devastating news, how they will handle uh, devastating information, the average person, the average sheep, how they will handle devastating information to know that their world as they know it is coming to an end. And through these studies, they saw that the average person will begin to immediately forego all of their responsibility, create disruptive behavior, and they will engage in criminal acts. Now, that isn't to say everybody. You and I, Roy, we're not going to engage in criminal acts, but that is to say that the people of our world who have been so blinded by reality, they've been so led down a, a path of fogged dependency to think that every time you pick up the phone, a person will be there, 911 will come to help. Every time that there's a disaster, a non-governmental organization or the U.S. government or another militarized government will come to help. They've been blindly led into this childlike path to think that everything is always going to be okay. So these university studies have shown that when they're given raw information that discusses potentially devastating effects on the planet, on their longevity of life, uh, on the safety of them and their family and their children, They immediately forego their responsibility. They don't care about their jobs. They don't care about their bills. So effectively, life in modern society will come to an immediate halt if the government tells the people how bad Fukushima is. And that's why we see this cover up. That's why we see this. Everything's going to be okay. Let's just watch and wait. Let's just treat the symptoms. They're covering this up because life as we know it today will end in chaos within weeks. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I believe that those papers that we had a discussion regarding this after our last conversation, and I believe that the people will become more violent and immediately become more violent. And that's my main concern is that the increase 
all of a sudden you've got, you know, literally millions of people, if not billions of people that are angry, frustrated, right. and don't know, they have no direction. They have no, have no purpose. Their purpose has been taken away from them. So I can see why, you know, you may not want to let that genie out of the bottle too soon, but at some point it's going to become all too clear. And that's what I believe that we're, we're starting to see now. I mean, I that's read right. an You're... article uh, last fall, maybe, maybe earlier than that, that cesium-137 was showing up in Florida citrus. Now, Florida yes, you're right. and Japan are, <laughs> there are thousands and thousands of, of nautical miles in between. And for That's it right. to have traveled from Japan to Florida and leached into the soil and gathered up into the citrus groves, that's, that's very telling right there. Now, let me just tell everyone, Roy, real quick how bad this is. Plutonium, PU-239, has a half-life of 24,100 years. How many generations into our future of the Earth is 24,000 years? Plutonium was existent at the Fukushima plant. Yes. Plutonium is part of what is leaching into this Earth, into this world, and it has a half-life of 24,000 years years it will be here still leaching into the earth long after our children's 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 children have passed the earth that's why it's so dangerous that's why it's such a catastrophe because it is going to be here literally poisoning literally rotting the planet further on than anyone thinks life might even exist on this planet the, the, when you say leaching into the earth, let's let's explain that. It's the okay. fuel rods are actually melting the earth. They are melting into the planet. That's right. And as That's right. and I did a, a rough uh, back of the napkin calculation about a year and a half ago, as they were pouring all of this water onto the plant to try to cool it down or keep it cool to keep it from exploding further. Right. They, I calculated about 75 million gallons of radioactive water that they had poured onto that ran off into the Pacific ocean. And that and, was and a still year and running. a half ago. And it's still doing it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you know, that's, that's the thing for the next 24,000 years, potentially, we're going to have to suffer the rot of this radiation burrowing into the earth while it's also at the top end of it being inundated with water to keep in it this catastrophic reaction from constantly taking place. I mean, you're talking about a potential event that could literally wipe Japan off the planet. You're talking about an event that could see so much destruction in a, a month's time that they are just scrambling to enact these procedures that will calm this reaction. And that's what the water that you're talking about, that's what this falsity of, of the ice wall, uh, you know, they're, they're at a point of desperation. There yes. is not much they can do, but they are trying to put a Band-Aid over an amputated limb. And, and what, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is, I mean, TEPCO, the, the president of TEPCO, when Fukushima happened, and it's been six years now. This has been going on for six years. When it happened, the president came out and said, it will take 20 years to develop the technology just to deal with this. And now, right. in the meantime, we have these fuel rods that are still active. They're, they're bent. They're mangled. They're in this, in this pool of water trying to keep them cool. If they touch, then it's over. Like you said, Japan as an island would more than likely disappear completely. That's right. Yeah. And, and you know, we have watched some, you know, there, there's some individuals that work for non-governmental organizations that have sent drones in uh, to watch the devastation that followed the path of the initial blast. So just the initial blast when the, the top popped. Uh, right after the earthquake and the tsunami. 
And in that path of radiation, you have devastation in the forest. You have a complete area that is devoid of healthy life. And so this is just a small glimpse into what is going to happen to the rest of Japan because 24,000 years, how much can the earth take? How much can right. our bodies take? You know, they're already seeing a huge spike in cancer in Japan. And they're saying, no, this is due to other factors. Uh, we can't take into account Fukushima. And they're trying to blame it on all of these other things like an increase in smoking or an increase, <laughs> you know, in behaviorisms. But it's anything. directly. Yeah, anything except Fukushima because they can't, like you said, let this genie out of the bottle. I mean, you've got over and over again, TEPCO officials are resigning. Uh, you know, there's suicides in TEPCO at, during this cover up, suicides in the government. You've got the people of Japan who the government is trying to get them to move back to Fukushima, over 80% of them, because they've seen an increase in sickness, because they've seen the devastation that this has happened. They don't want to go back and they're fighting this tooth and nail. But the fact is, it's not going to be long when you're that close to radiation before you don't have any teeth or any nails left. Well, the thing is, is that they can't even, the robots that they send in to the plant to take a look around, to see what it can see, they've all, quote, died. Every single one of them. There's because the radiation levels are so incredibly high that technology can't take it. What about flesh and bone? Goodness gracious. I mean, this is a machine that has a lot of gold and silver, and gold and silver are anti-corrosive. So That's if, right. if they can't if they can't take it, then my my flesh and blood, they don't stand a chance. I mean, and and, and I want to I want to make something clear and that we're not trying to scare people. It's that this subject is not discussed near enough. There's not near enough coverage. There's practically no coverage outside of uh, ENN uh, news. I mean, they're, they're the only consistent coverage that I can find. Yeah, you're um, right. And, and that's a good point. The, the fact that there, is, there are things that we can do. First, everybody should have indoor growing or a greenhouse started by this weekend. Start thinking about this, even a small greenhouse. Well, you say, okay, well, why am I going to do that? They're not testing local vegetables for, uh, you know, radiation, things like that. Everything might be okay. I get it from the other coast. You're going to do that so that you can plant trees indoors away from radiation for the pectin. Now, I'm going to read to you a little bit of information from the National uh, Institute of Health. This is uh, this was published in 2004 regarding tests that they did on Chernobyl children following their inundation of radiation after the Chernobyl incident. So this is just the abstract. Uh, I'm going to give Rory. I'm going to give your guys a link here so you can put it down in the description so they can read okay. it for themselves and really take it in. <clears throat> this says as a complement of standard radioactive radio protective measures, apple pectin preparations are given especially in the Ukraine, to reduce the uptake of 137 cesium in the organisms of children. The question has been raised, is oral pectin also useful when children receive radiologically clean food? Or does the polysaccharide only act in binding 137 cesium in the gut, blocking its intestinal absorption? What they did here was a test on the children to show that the pectin that you can buy at the store that, that is in the food that you grow at home, that's in the fruit that you grow at home, is effective at reducing the radioactive load in children and adults by up to 40%, and in some cases wow. higher. So you've got, and what, it's, what the pectin is doing is it's binding to the radiation as you take it in intestinally, uh, through ingestion, and through other means, and it is allowing it to pass through the urine of those that take pectin. So talk about a, a proactive measure that we can all start today and how easy could it be to say, okay, I am worried about Fukushima. I do understand that it is a life-changing event, but I'm not a fatalist and I'm going to do something about it today. Exactly. All I have to do, and Rory, all you have to do and anyone listening is start today canning your own food. Well, why do you want to can your own food? I'm talking make jellies make jams. Everybody in your family is going to love it. And you're going to be adding pectin 
into the jellies, into the jams and giving it to your kids and giving it to everybody else, you know, make this a part of just your everyday life. It's going to create two things for you. One, it's going to remove the dependency that you have on the junk that's purchased at the store for morning, you know, for breakfast to go on toast because you're making it. And two, you're going to be giving those that you love pectin, which is going to bind to any radiation that they take in. And this, this is also going to help with x-rays and things like that at MRIs. And it's going to allow it to pass through their urine and not affect their uh, cellular lining as much. So please start that today. Roy, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I think that it's great. I'm sitting over here smiling like a Cheshire cat because it's, that it's so simple. I mean, you, it's an act of kindness is the first right. thing. And then the second thing is, is that you're actually potentially saving their, your children or your family's children from future problems. And, That's and, right. nobody, and nobody even knows it. You don't, it don't even have to be brought up. It's just, here's some jam or some jelly that I made. Hope you like it. And just that just becomes part of your gift giving, you know, for whatever reason, you know, that's right. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's one of those unseen acts of kindness that everyone will look and say, Oh, you know, Rory, Oh, Brad, Oh, everyone, they make the best jam, the best jelly. And trust me that they're going to think it's the best because it, there is such a wide spectrum of difference in taste, texture, and durability from what you buy at the store, because this is made at home. It's made according to your recipe, not one raised for profit, not a recipe that was made to maximize profit. And, and so was, you're going, and go more importantly, it was made with love. <laughs> That's right. And so you're going to be giving this to friends and family and children, and they're going to literally eat it up all day, every day. And when they get tired of all the apple jam that you're making, make some strawberry jam and there then some grape and, and just keep up this routine that is proactive in nature and keep it in the back of your mind that it should the event worsen and should things really escalate out of control, you can increase this and just put in more pectin and please go read this white paper. Please go read from the National Institute of Health and see for yourself that there are things that you can do to negate the damage that is being wrought all over the world. Yep. And. Brad, unfortunately, I'm going to have to end it there, and I want to ask you back because I want to keep this conversation going because this is a huge issue, like I said a minute ago. No one is discussing it, and it's, and it's very difficult to get information out, and maybe we can become that voice that does keep it in front of people because out of sight, out of mind needs to end. That's right. And if I can say one last thing, this is from the sure. Oregon State University. They say, finally, melatonin in 300 milligram doses reduces in vitro incidence of chromosomal aberrations, that is to say the effect that radiation has on your DNA, and micronuclei produced by radiation treatments and protects against DNA damage. Melatonin scavenges hydroxyl and pyroxyl radicals as well as uh, peroxy peroxynitrate anions and appears to be more effective than vitamin E. So add these things into your daily lifestyle. And as we each strive to get more off the grid, as we each strive to get more towards natural medicine, these are the things we need to be doing anyways, because yeah. if someone can't sleep, you give them melatonin, uh, you know, you give them the jam, you give them these things and you're actually helping them. There you go. I love it. Yeah. Send me those links. They'll be in the description below the video. Brad, certainly appreciate all your time and wisdom and knowledge. And folks, be sure to look for uh, Brad Harris on YouTube at Full Spectrum Survival and Off the Grid with Brad and Kelly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brad. We'll talk with you soon. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody. You too. Bye-bye.